this is the last in our uh, four-part series of what's new in 2022. If you've missed any of these videos, we do have them hosted on uh, fourlane.com. We have them in our YouTube channel. So if you go into YouTube and search for Four Lane, the, all of our videos are there. Um, lots of videos, even going back to like 2013. Uh, and then uh, we also have a, a video on fourlane.com that is all of the four-part series in one. So if you have a big chunk of time, through and uh, check out all those we have that online uh, so today is our last of our series uh, we're going to talk about towards the end of this call about what's coming next week next week's gonna be a really big week uh, into it uh, and webgility the CEO of webgility are going to be joining us on our call we're gonna be talking about e-commerce um, because this entire series has been very heavily focused around e-commerce, retail, wholesale, distribution, anything with inventory, which could include construction, nonprofits have inventory, right? It's all over the place. So we do a lot of focus around inventory over here. Um, but everything is great learning uh, to propel you forward, right? Understanding how the software works is half the battle with making sure that we're getting the most out of our QuickBooks Enterprise software. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm Marjorie Adams. I'm the CEO of Four Lane. I'm going to be leading our call today. I am going to be going through and answering questions as much as I can. Uh, definitely use those questions for anything. If we can't get to them on the call, I will make sure that we follow up with you afterwards. Also, um, if you put in their chat, uh, we'll also be following along there. If anybody wants to share with me where you're located, I would love to hear that, um, where people are calling in from. It's always fun to see. Uh, where our where our fellow QuickBooks users are. So feel free to share. Um, all right, so let's get started. So this is the last in our series. We've got two things that we're going to be going over today, but they're pretty big deals, uh, pr a pretty big deal, I think, uh, with what's been added into QuickBooks Enterprise or QuickBooks Desktop. The first one that we're going to talk about is pay bills online with Melio. Uh, so, this is amazing, <laughs> in case you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> uh, so basically what this is, is in product, the ability to schedule and pay bills. Now we have had in the past, obviously a lot of people use bill.com. We've seen a lot of our clients utilizing bill.com. Uh, we also have some banks, like if you bank with Wells Fargo as an example, they have this direct connect and it allows you to pay bills online using their service. You pay the bank a fee for that. Um, but now into it has partnered with Melio and we have the ability to do these things in product. I'm going to spend most of my time as much as possible today in product, but the hard part is I want to show you the setup uh, of a lot of these. And so I'm going to have to be in PowerPoint uh, when we're talking about setup. But the purpose of showing setup is my goal, which is to get people to start utilizing these features. So it's easy. That's what we want to show today, right? It's very simple. It's not like you're signing a contract and uh, locked in for life with any of these features. That's never anything that QuickBooks does to us or Intuit does to us. Um, so we can try it, test it out, pay ourselves maybe, and see if this works out well. And if we like it, then we can start utilizing it with actual vendors, okay? Uh, so just to start things off, uh, the first time that you go in to pay a bill um, online, you're going to see this screen. You can pay with bank or credit card. A couple things to note, if you do pay with your bank account, it is free. So that is using a bank transfer, ACH, or paying via debit card, that is free. You can use your credit card for payment, so you can use your Amex card if you want to. There is a 2.9% fee which is very similar to some of those other payment methods out there like Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, you know, that they, they charge a fee when you pay via credit card. So same thing. Intuit's is a little bit lower. It's 0.1 lower, right, than Venmo, I think. I think Venmo is 3%. Uh, so you're gonna decide how you want to. You can think about it, right? This is just an uh, informational screen. Then we come in, it's gonna pull up the bill that you wanna pay. One thing that I did want to note, and I'm going to show you this in product in just a second, but the support, if we have any questions, is support at qbdtusers.melio.com. That means it is Melio support that we are contacting, not Intuit support. So that might make things a little bit easier to stomach sometimes. 
I think that that's really important. So if you have any questions, they can help you out. The first thing that they uh, pop up here is choose how you want to pay. Um, so you can pay by bank account again, set up your bank account. You can enter your credit card information or you can enter debit card information, okay? Uh, also something to pick up on here, your, your vendor doesn't necessarily need to accept credit cards in order to pay by credit card. So for some of those that we're trying to work on cash flow, vendor says we cannot pay on a credit card, we can utilize this service. We still have that 2.9% fee when we pay on credit card, but we can utilize this service to help out with those cash flow issues along the way too. Okay. Short term, hopefully cash flow, not long term cash flow issues, not something that we're doing constantly because we can probably get better rates than 2.9% on cash. <laughs> uh, and we can help you out with that. Okay, when you connect to your bank account, there are a couple ways that you can do that. Um, so you can connect instantly, uh, which is the process that I'm gonna show you, or you can also verify with deposits. So they'll put into micro deposits into your account. The verify with deposits will take one to two days because you have to wait for them to show up in your account in, in order to start making payments. Uh, again, very similar to if you ever set up a PayPal account, exact same thing. If we are gonna connect instantly, uh, they do use Plaid to link to your bank account. So it's a third party service that a lot of uh, companies use to connect to bank accounts and make sure it's secure. So you'll say yes, continue, verify your identity, um, and then it'll take you in to start logging into your account. So I logged into my Wells Fargo account here. I uh, selected the checking account that I was gonna utilize and then boom, that's it, right? So it's literally just the same as when you are syncing your QuickBooks account to your bank where you just log in. That should be it as far as steps uh, to get your bank account synced. When we're setting up our credit card account, uh, you add your credit card details in here, right? What is the card number? Uh, what is the expiration date in the CVV? Add the card hold, holder details. So pretty straightforward things we're always used to setting up. And then now I have the ability to pay via credit card on my account as well. Okay, so let's hop on into QuickBooks and take a look at where we see some of these things. Uh, so the first way that we're going to see this is we're going to see on the enter bill. So when I have a bill entered into my system, now notice now I have schedule online payment as a button up top. We have a lot of new buttons this year, right? Upload and review bills, that's new. Approve, schedule online payment, all new. So when I click on schedule online payment, it's gonna pop me into the pay bills screen. And you can see down here, there is an, a new payment method, schedule online payment down here, okay? Uh, and then it's gonna load and pull me into my account. So it's telling me up top, I'm scheduling a payment for $505 to this vendor. I have set up in here my different methods of payment um, that I can decide to, you know, which one am I gonna pay via? I can say Wells Fargo checking as example and say continue. Then it asks me on my next screen, how would you like vendor one, two, three? So this would be an actual vendor, hopefully, right? Not, not a fake one here. How would you like them to receive this payment? So you can do a bank ACH transfer, which means you enter their details here. You can do paper check. Some people still just like those paper checks. I read somewhere the other day that for paper checks, it costs 30 cents. Uh, and it's 30, 30, wait, what is it? Remember, it's 3% or something like that of each paper check it costs in order to process. Like, what, is, what does it actually take to get through all that? So same as what it would cost if you just paid by credit card, basically. In time and effort and banks, blah, 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 all the things. The other thing that you can do, which is amazing, is we can ask vendor for payment details. So we do not have to touch the details of the vendor payment. An email will be sent to the vendor. The vendor gets to put in their own information. They do the data entry for you, saving you a ton of time, and uh, we get to go ahead and move forward. So if I say ask, the next step is it's going to say send an email. 
I can put in the vendor's business email address and say save and continue. I'm going to flip on over here to the PowerPoint so you guys can kind of see what this looks like. Again, the same screen that we were looking at just a second ago. Here's me putting in an email requesting my vendor to uh, accept a payment from me. One thing that you do you want to note here is that if the vendor doesn't respond to the email sent to them within seven days the payment will be canceled so in other areas of QuickBooks like merchant services which we'll be talking about as another feature here today you know that link is good until the client pays with this that link is good for seven days which helps you again with controlling cash flow it might have to be you know it's canceled, it comes back and says, hey, this payment was canceled, the vendor never responded to you. We have to go do some work to get the vendor to respond because it went to junk mail or whatever it is. But it helps it, us know that they're not gonna just be accepting a payment you know, 400 days from today. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't last that long. <laughs> so seven days. Uh, so then our next uh, step here is it's gonna say, when would you like the payment deducted? So again, cash flow wise, it lets us make these decisions and be in control of our cash. We can put a memo for the vendor in here. So invoice one, two, three, four. <clears throat> the next step is just a review and confirm. Uh, what is great about this is that it will show you, so this is actually one giant one, but I split it into two um, on this slide deck here. So it says, who am I paying? What am I paying for? What's my amount? What bank account is it coming from? When the payment's gonna be deducted? When the vendor should expect to receive this payment? Okay. Uh, and then uh, the memo to the vendor, as well as the transaction fee. So if I had chosen to pay by credit card, I would know right away how much I was paying in order to uh, make this payment to my vendor, right? What that 2.9% is. And then we click confirm and schedule payment. Okay. The next thing that we're gonna go into is what does it look like on the other side? What do they see? So now this is what they're going to get an email from. So their email is gonna be coming from Intuit Service. It's really Melio, but it says Intuit Service in there. Know that there is a lot of spam going around, so we might wanna make sure vendors are aware, maybe create, a uh, email template to send out to vendors to make them aware when we're setting them up as a vendor. Adams Key Inc. would like to pay you $501 via QuickBooks. Would you like to accept this payment? And so they just click on accept payment. Uh, then it gives them some options. Would you like to receive this payment in two to three days with a bank transfer or five to seven days via check or via paper check, right? Both are free. All right, and then when I choose that I wanna receive it via ACH, because I care about that cash flow, not about paper. Also, we're a remote company, so where's that paper gonna go? <laughs> uh, I put in my routing number and account number, so this is your vendor putting in their own information into the system. Pretty cool. Again, if you can get somebody else to do your data entry, that is awesome. Okay, a couple things. Actually, before I go into that, let me just show you in product one more thing. So when you are on a bill, uh, bill go back into my bill screen here and, and go previous a couple. So here I have a paid bill. Notice that it switches up here to say view online payment. So I do have the ability to log in and see what that online payment is. Um, when I click into it, it takes me. A lot of the features with QuickBooks that you'll see um, in the last year, this year, are kind of sitting on top of QuickBooks. They're not built in product, which is great in several ways, right? Because this is connecting online. So it is it is holding our details um, online uh, and working through an online portals. Uh, it also doesn't bog down the software, which is a great thing to, to uh, know and understand as well. But here I can see payment details. It was paid fully, what the amount was all the information by bank transfer. So if a, if a vendor comes back and says, oh, I never received this payment, I mean, we've got some pretty hefty backup for us right there, okay? 
The other thing uh, that we have in settings here, I want to show you in products. So you can come in here, add other bank accounts if you want to, other credit card accounts. I could add my debit card account if I need to. I can come in and delete um, options. Oops, I don't want to do that. I can delete if I didn't want that bank account to be available anymore for payment. Um, I can see any receipts for fees that were due to Intuit in here. So you would see any fees for things that you paid via credit card. Um, what are the vendors that we have set up in the system? So which vendors? Um, and I can also come in and look at right, what is their email address and add methods through here um, for them to be able to uh, accept payments in if I wanted to enter it manually and not have them enter it. Um, if I go back to vendors for vendor one, two, three, uh, wait, no, not that one. Vendor one, you can see, right, it's got the dot, dot, dot here because I can see the vendor's method that they have set up on account. Okay, and then I just have some general account information as well. So that's some things in product. You also have under vendors here, you have sync online bill payments. Um, so if we want to force through a sync for some reason, then we can force through. Um, to see that basically what that's gonna sync down is when they have been paid, right? So it's on a schedule, but this will force your sync to see like what's the latest of when they have been paid. All right, some limitations to be aware of. So payments can only go to sole proprietors or B2B businesses, right? Business to business, it's probably for the best. You don't wanna have a whole bunch of individuals being paid through this. You do need an EIN or a, t a tax ID number. There are no partial payments. So you cannot take one bill, right, a $501 bill and make a partial payment. Um, so some solutions to this that we've come up with cl clients on is you can have one purchase order. The purchase order can be for $501 and then enter multiple bills for whatever the payments are. You can also create a copy of the bill. So if you have the original bill, $501, you decide you're gonna pay it in two installments, you can uh, edit the original one from $500, just hit that create copy to enter the second one and make that second payment if you want to. Okay, so just some options. Uh, you can pay one bill at a time only. It's not batch, well you can batch, pill, batch run multiple bills, 20 bills in one batch, uh, but it's one payment that's gonna to go to each vendor at a time for one bill. And generally this makes it a little bit easier, honestly, right? Like if you have any relationships with like a Costco or a um, you know, Best Buy or any of these, they pay things individually as well, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to track, right? So um, they might do, uh, like they give you the individual uh, payment that's coming through and then there's some reconciliations that we can do. Makes it easier, you don't have to provide a bill payment stub to the vendors if you pay each individually anyway, right? So you have to do one or the other, um, so. And then domestic or ACH, or domestic ACH only and paper checks. Okay, so domestic only. Uh, business type restrictions to be aware of. Cannot work with businesses that are internet gambling, multi-level marketing, tobacco, marijuana, pharmaceuticals, adult products or services, weapons, ammunition, fireworks, explosives. Pretty much the same things that we have as restrictions when we're working with uh, Intuit Merchant Services. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So I do have a question from Connie. It says on Melio's website, they don't support QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise. So I'm inside of Enterprise doing this. This is not through Melio directly, right? This is built into your QuickBooks Enterprise subscription or it built into your QuickBooks Desktop 2022 subscription. Okay, so you don't have to go to Melio's website at all. I just brought up that support is through Melio because we do hear a lot about Intuit support from our customers and so it's nice to know that the support is through Melio if you're having an issue with this. Um, okay. Uh, I only have to enter, so uh, Lester asks, can I enter the ACH details one time? Yes, so you just have to enter them one time um, and then they, they keep it. And the nice part again is that the, the maintenance, especially if you have the vendor enter the information, right? It's all secured, it's not uh, maintained on your servers, it's maintained on the Melio and Intuit servers. 
so you don't have to worry about any of that compliance stuff. Um, okay, so let me go on to the next one because we just have 10 minutes here. Uh, oh, uh, just a reminder of why, why this is important, right? So everything 2022 is talking about efficiency, speed. So efficiency is in product electronic bill payments. You no longer have to go out to a third party external software, do it right inside of the product, save money. Uh, the price point is very amazing, free for ACH and debit card payments. Uh, credit card payments is 2.9% very in line with the rest of the everything else out there that we do <laughs> that's available and then of course saving time having people enter their own information and maintain their own information not having to make you guys do it is awesome okay this is a lot of the reasons why people use some of those third-party applications out there so it's great that they have this relationship and brought this relationship in-house for us basically right okay um Somebody did ask, why is this better than my bank, Wells Fargo, paying through my bank? So Wells Fargo does charge you a payment. They charge you $15 a month to use their fee usually. Maybe you have a good relationship with them and have gone that way, waived. <laughs> uh, but banks usually charge a fee to use their service. And it can be a per check fee. It can be a flat fee. But there is usually a fee. There is no fee if you're paying via paper check, ACH, or debit through this. You're just paying for QuickBooks, which you're paying for already. All right, so this is the second that we want to talk about. Payment link, so it's a little bit similar concepts on the flip side. Now we're going over to how customers pay us. Okay, so before we are talking about how we pay our vendors, this is now on the front, on the other side, revenue side, on how customers pay us. So they have this concept of payment links, and we'll talk about what these are used for, but a lot of this was driven from the request for prepayments, the ability to take prepayments without having to make an invoice to request money. So again, I have to stay in the PowerPoint a lot because of the setup. Um, so basically, to complete payment setup, what you do is you uh, click proceed to setup. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in file, I missed this, under customers, you you go to payment links, it's going to pop up this box, complete setup now. Uh, when you do this, um, you're going to log into your Intuit account. Okay, you do have to be one of the user types that is allowed to access merchant services when you do this. So, most likely, it's going to be one of the admin people doing this initially. And then it tells you all the information create a payment link, send the link to your customer, get paid. And then we can create a payment link. Um, so what we do is you just literally go in and say create and send a payment link. Um, so this is going to be actually while I go through this slide deck, let me uh, start the flip on over to another file because I have to do these all these in different files <laughs> uh, where they allow me to do certain things. So you say create and send a payment link. You put in the amount that you want to pay. Um, you can put in there and some information about what product or service you're selling. Custom report, download payment. As an example, this is a great way to market things, um, put in some more information, uh, tips and you know little bits that can get customers to trigger you. So like custom report, down payment, and then you can put a, another thing that says, you know, conversion payment next week or something like that, right? So it's just little bits of information you can put in to talk to your client without talking to your client. Um, who you're sending it to, so this will be your customer. I uh, pick a drop down, whoops. Drop down on the customer list there, and then what's the customer email address? And then you can choose the ways that you want to get paid. So you can get paid by credit card from them, or you can get paid by bank transfer, right? So bank transfer, you'll see, has uh, no fees. Credit cards has fees. Okay. So in this situation, we are not creating a transaction at all. We are literally just going in and asking for a payment link for a certain amount for customers to make a payment to us. Again, something you might have seen similarly in like a PayPal, where you can request payment from people. This is a very similar thing, but this is in product in QuickBooks. Okay, and then you can email the payment link, you can copy the payment link. 
um, and then uh, we'll go through what the customer sees. Some ideas for this, so down payments, we, we see clients use this a lot for down payments. We'll talk about what the effect is when you get into QuickBooks, customer deposits, prepayments, initial consultations. So if you charge for that first uh, phone call or if you charge for a trip fee for the, you know, somebody to come out and, and uh, give you a, an estimate, something like that, any kind of estimate, sales orders, payments. Um, so payments before the invoice, right? Payments before we are generating an invoice. You can text these. We did have customers recently asking if we can text the ability to uh, have a customer make a payment. You can do that. Facebook Messenger, Slack. It's literally just a link. You just copy this link. Um, use that what service we're selling to promote more uh, and let your customer do the data entry on credit card information again, right? Because they're going to get this link. They're going to put in their own credit card information. No data entry for you. Or your sales reps, right? Which probably will make their life a lot easier. Uh, so what will happen is here's an email that's going to come out. It's coming out. It has four lane in the email, so the, the business name, um, but it's coming from an Intuit email address, notification.intuit.com. Um, it's saying customer is, you know, four lane is requesting $100 for customer or customer report down payment, and then they can click to pay. When they come in to pay, uh, they have the option to pay, right, debit card, credit card, um, and then they fill in their information here and click pay. Okay. Very straightforward, very simple. Then it says you have paid four lane $100. You can download the receipt from there. This is what the receipt looks like. So even better, not only did you have them do their own data entry, they are responsible for their own, uh, their own receipts and they can capture this receipt and keep it on account. You don't have to send them anything. Pretty cool. Uh, when you come in uh, to your merchant service center, so this is gonna be coming in uh, to your Merchant Service Center, just like any credit card payment, right? Somebody who pays you uh, via via the link on an invoice, somebody who pays you the Pay Now button, somebody who pays you, um, you know, any any type of payment that you're taking, um, like somebody who you've run on account because you've got the credit card stored on account. They're all going to come into your Merchant Service Center. Um, you would be able to see in there if you clicked into it, right? Your payment that's pending, what it's for. Uh, your transaction ID, all these things. So a couple things to note with this, there are no partial payments on this as well, right? They cannot choose to pay you $50 today and $50 tomorrow. It is $100 that's requested. Um, after pay, the receipt is auto-generated. There is one link per transaction. So if you needed to, if you agreed to have them pay you $100 today and $100 tomorrow, you would have to generate two separate links. Okay. This is not meant to be used for collections. There would be a link on the invoice for collections. And then let's talk about what it looks like once you're inside of QuickBooks. Um, so when you're inside of QuickBooks, and um, we go to our customer center here. So what's great about this is it comes in as a payment and it ties it to the customer's account. So I have this payment sitting in here as a negative AR. It will be sitting on my AR report as a negative AR, okay? Uh, then when I go in and create an invoice for this hundred dollars, so I'm going to create an invoice for hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, let's say, because it was a down payment, and I say save, it'll pop up a box and tell me that I have credits on account. Would I like to apply this credit to the invoice now? I can say yes. There's that hundred dollar payment. I can say done, save and close, and now they only owe me three hundred dollars for whatever it is. Okay. All right. So that's all I really had to show you guys today. Two really big features. Um, I would love to see us utilizing this. I do get questions every week about when do you recommend utilizing 2022? Um, I think that it can be at any point in time that you utilize it. Um, we have had people uh, upgrading, clients upgrading for the last couple of months. If you wanna wait till year end when it's a little bit slower for people to uh, install it, right? So maybe while people are out of the office, your staff's out of the office, that's understandable but I think it's worthwhile to start utilizing these features. I always ask that we start utilizing the features that QuickBooks has rolled out to 
as, as quickly as possible. It's definitely within the year, right? So within like a couple months of release, um, it would be nice to start using it because that's our way of showing into it. We appreciate what you have done for us. Please continue to invest in this product, and uh, hopefully next year we'll just continue. We'll have more and more and more features. All right, next week I wanted to let you guys know we do have a state of e-commerce with Webgility. So uh, Gina from Intuit, Channel Partner Silva Intuit, as well as Prague from the CEO of Webgility is going to be joining us next week. We're going to be talking about some things relating to e-commerce. Uh, the week after that, we're going to be talking about the accounting behind inventory. Inventory is one of those things that people just hate to touch for some reason. I love it. It's very simple when you break it down to debits and credits. And so we're going to be talking about that. Going into cycle counts because it's that time of year. And hopefully we are not doing cycle counts on paper, at least in Excel, but then hopefully on our devices. And uh, then you guys can see what else is coming up. Uh, thanks for attending today. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys.